And as we worked on Health Kit, we came across an even broader impact that iPhone could make. And that is on medical research. And to tell you all about this, I'd like to invite Jeff Williams up. Jeff? Thanks, Tim. I know medical research is not what you were expecting, but uh, let me explain. When we were working on Health Kit, we talked to a lot of medical experts, and the conversation often turned to research and some of the challenges they face uh, in a process that really hasn't changed in decades, and we thought we could help. One of the biggest challenges researchers have is recruiting. They often have to pay people to participate, which by the way doesn't give you the best cross-section of the population. But the bigger issue is small sample sizes, sometimes 50 to 100 people, which limits our understanding of diseases. Another issue is subjective data. The most common way to assess Parkinson's is to have a patient walk in front of a physician and the physician rates them on a scale of zero to four. You know, I think that's a two. Yet another issue is the frequency of data. Researchers often get snapshots of data through time, like that quarterly trip to the doctor's office. But we all know that the reality is disease symptoms ebb and flow daily and sometimes hourly. But perhaps the most significant challenge is the communication flow. When you participate in a study, you often don't hear back until the very end of the study, if at all. We looked at these problems and we saw an opportunity to help. There are hundreds of millions of iPhone users out there, many of whom would gladly contribute if it were just easier to do so. So today, we're proud to announce Research Kit. Research Kit is a software framework made specifically for medical research. It lets researchers easily create apps, and it turns iPhone and Health Kit into powerful diagnostic tools. Now, we didn't build it on our own. We've been working with experts from these institutions for the past year, and together we've built the first five apps, each targeted at some of the world's most serious diseases. Let me give you an example. Parkinson's. We worked with the University of Rochester, Shunhua Hospital, and Sage Bionetworks to create Empower. Now, anyone with an iPhone can contribute to Parkinson's research. It's easy to sign up. You just do it right on the phone. And the app turns iPhone into a diagnostic tool. Let me give you an example. There's a quick tapping test that evaluates hand tremors. Or you can say ah into the microphone and the processor will detect minute vocal cord variations that assesses the level of Parkinson's. And remember that walk test? Now all you have to do is stick your iPhone in your pocket walk out 20 steps and back, and the accelerometer and gyroscope precisely measure gait. And you can do that anywhere, not just in the doctor's office. <laughs> the app also pulls data from health kit, like your activity data, from your Apple Watch, from your iPhone, or other devices. Researchers believe that exercise can affect the symptoms of Parkinson's, but some believe that exercise may actually slow or even halt the progression of Parkinson's, and now researchers get a chance to look at that data. But here's the best part. 
The user sees this right on his or her phone, empowering them to understand and possibly influence their health long before a research study is concluded. So that's just Parkinson's. Uh, for diabetes, we worked with Mass General on an app that looks at behavior and glucose levels. For cardiovascular disease, we've worked with Stanford Medicine and the University of Oxford on an app that looks at heart health. For asthma, we've worked with Mount Sinai on an app that, the purpose of this is to see if a mobile app can help a patient manage their asthma. Uh, now, now, this one's available throughout the US, but, but they're doing something really neat in New York City in phase two. Mount Sinai is giving away some spirometers and Bluetooth inhalers for data accuracy. And then they've teamed up with Cornell Medical College and they're actually swabbing city surfaces throughout New York City to look for pathogens. And then the iPhone, the GPS coordinates from the iPhone will compare to exacerbations from the, the spirometer data and then map that to the pathogen map and try to tie all of that together to understand what the triggers are for asthma. That's just cool. <laughs> and for breast cancer, there's, there's been amazing progress in the treatment of breast cancer over the past couple of decades. And as a result, there are more and more survivors who often suffer with symptoms post-treatment that are not well understood. So this app is targeted at all of those brave women hoping to help them live a better day. Now, let's talk about something really, really important. There is nothing more sensitive than your medical data. You decide what apps you participate in, what research you participate in, you decide how your data is shared, and Apple will not see your data. We're, we're really excited about Research Kit, but we thought it'd be great if you heard from the people who've been working with it. I've spent a large part of my career focused on a number of different uh, diseases, from obesity, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and one of the problems has really been around our ability to understand what's actually going on in those diseases. The key to understanding health and disease is research and data. What all researchers want is measured, quantitative, objective data. Well, up until now, when somebody wanted to do a research study, they might, uh, you know, put up a bunch of flyers around and hope somebody comes along and tears off the phone number. Methods for conducting medical research haven't really changed in decades. We have sent out over 60,000 letters. Those 60,000 letters have netted 305 women. We really do need to transform how we do research. And the iPhone, with an ability to collect data, could be a powerful tool for research. Research Kit is a framework. It's a framework that enables medical researchers to more easily design the apps that they're going to use for clinical studies. We're talking about trying to change the scale of the amount of data that you can collect. Going from data that might be collected, say, once every three months, to data that's collected, say, once every second. The iPhone is being carried now by millions of people all over the world. So to think that this device that you use to check your mail or Facebook can be used to battle disease is really simply amazing. The concept that I could kick out a survey to patients every day, every week, that would show up on their phone and would actually improve their health and our ability to care for them, that's a game changer. That is awesome. We can now engage unprecedented numbers of individuals in large geographic areas, many of which have never been able to participate in research. Half of the Parkinson patient in the world is in China. China has the largest number of mobile phone users 
which means that we can collect more information so that can give us more accurate estimate on things for the research purpose. What we're building into this platform are simple structured tests that people can go through, things like tapping or a voice test. And this can all be done using the built-in sensors on the device and a little bit of code. One of the things that Research Kit will do is put people at the center of research, giving people the insights and the tools they need to live better and healthier lives. It's going to change research for every condition that's out there, and that just makes it very accessible to patients. The easier you can make it for people to participate, the better off you're going to be. I want to leave a legacy for my granddaughter. Maybe when she's 25, they'll come up with, oh wow, that research study that was done in 2015, you know, with the iPhone was really key in making a breakthrough on how we can better help asthmatics. You know, she'll say, wow, my grandma was a part of that. Putting the solutions in the hands, literally the hand with an iPhone of the patient, this is the answer. This is exactly where medicine is going. It has to. It has to. We're going we're gonna to add the research kit over time, um, but we wanted anybody, anywhere, regardless of the platform they're on, to contribute. So we're actually going to make this open source. <laughs> we're releasing research kit next month. And the first five apps that you saw are going to be available today. <laughs> Apple has always believed that amazing things can happen when you put technology in the hands of the many. There's a, there's a brilliant and motivated research community out there and we can't wait to see what they do with it. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Brilliant.